Welcome back to Book Break. Today I am setting myself a reading challenge. I'm going to try and read a whole book this afternoon. And that book is a book from the 90s. It is a children's historical fiction novel called Catherine Called Birdie. So why am I suddenly reading this today? It's because there's a new film out, a film directed by Lena Dunham with an incredible cast. So the main character Catherine is played by Bella Ramsey from Game of Thrones. The film also stars Andrew Scott, as in the hot priest, Joe Alwyn, as in Taylor Swift's boyfriend, Billy Piper, as in the Billy Piper. And this is the book that it's based on, Catherine Called Birdie by Karen Cushman. It's a medieval YA novel about a girl whose father is trying to marry her off and her mother's trying to turn her into the like perfect medieval lady and Catherine doesn't want to do either of those things. As it says on the cover, she's not your average damsel in distress. So I'm going to spend this afternoon discovering who Catherine is and why is she called Birdie? Okay, here's what I know so far. Catherine is a very funny character. She is 14 years old and her older brother is forcing her to write this diary of her life because he thinks it will make her less childish. She's unamused by that. She's unamused by her whole life, really. She's the daughter of a knight. This makes her a lady, but according to her, not a rich lady. She's only got 10 servants in 70 villages. She's very bored because all she can do is be trapped inside a hemming. I don't think she's very good at it. She's always talking about unpicking her stitches. She's always picking fleas off herself. And she says corpus bones when she wants to, the equivalent of swearing, I guess. Corpus bones, what a torture. All the other children are playing outside and she's not allowed. I said she was 14, she's 13, she's nearly 14. Here's her latest complaint. I am near 14 and I have never yet seen a hanging. My life is barren. Uncle George is coming home. You know who Uncle George is? Joe Alwyn. Taylor Swift's boyfriend's coming. I love when you're reading a book aimed at children and then you notice something that is clearly for the adults. My camera nearly just fell off the sofa arm. What I was going to say before that near disaster was there was a fire in the village that went awry and accidentally set alight a haystack and then two figures emerged from that haystack, Cobb the smith and a woman who were scorched and sheepish but unhurt. They are also now betrothed. I know what they were doing in that haystack. I can see why this is a really well-loved children's book because it's a really good mix of being very funny and silly, there's a lot of nonsense, a lot of fart jokes in here, um, but then also like covering some other like more important issues so that her mother for example has just had her fifth miscarriage in a row and, and she talks about the grief that she's going through so it's a really good mix. I think Catherine might have a crush on her uncle which is a little bit weird but he is Joe Alwyn so I guess we'll let it slide. Her uncle is marrying someone else which I think might be best for everyone. At the beginning of every diary entry when she puts the date she says whose feast day it is like which saint's day it is and then she says what well, grisly end they met. I feel like medieval times were maybe not all fun and games. Pretty grim time to live. I'm also very unsure on where this story is going to go for Catherine. She is very resistant to anything that the future might hold for her as a woman living in this time. Uh, but twice now she has been given wise words from people about not spending her life battling against the bars of her cage or stop spending so much time wishing she was someone else and be happy being her. I want Catherine to have a happy ending and I'm worried that because of the historical context she's not going to have what I would call a happy ending. Oh gosh, talking of people not having a happy ending, Catherine got her wish, she finally got to go and see a hanging and she ran away before it happened because she realised it was not fun. All she knew was that she was going to watch two thieves being hanged and she was very excited and bloodthirsty for this moment until they arrived and it was two 12 year old boys who just looked hungry and scared and so she ran away. It's very sad. Catherine has made a list of things that girls aren't allowed to do. Go on crusade, be horse trainers, be monks, laugh very loud, wear breeches, drink in alehouses, cut their hair, piss in the fire to make it hiss, wear nothing, be alone, get sunburned, run, marry whom they will, or glide on the ice. You know what? Some of those things I don't mind not doing. One of Catherine's friends has just been married off to a seven-year-old boy, and now she just has to sit at home while she waits for her husband to grow up. We 
have our third words of wisdom and they are all on a theme. I see where this book is going. So Catherine's nickname is Little Bird or Birdie and our latest wise guest, Madame Joanna, has said, You are lucky, little bird, for you have wings, but you must learn to master them. Look at the Baron's hawk there on her perch. Just because she doesn't flap her wings all the time doesn't mean she can't fly. I think they're going to make her accept her fate. But it's going to be like a feminist, empowering version of that. Sometimes, even within a rubbish situation, women can still be strong. She still can fly just because she doesn't resist all the time. Is that where it's going? I really enjoy how Catherine, despite living in a very different time, very different situation to how I remember growing up, is ultimately just a teenage girl. And with that comes fancying boys all the time. Even the boys she hates. She can't stop thinking about their golden hair and their lower lips. Some things never change. It is impossible to do all and be all a lady must be and not tie oneself in a knot. She must not look too proud, nor yet too humble, lest people say she is proud of her humility. She must not talk over much, yet not be silent, lest people think she does not know how to converse. She must not show anger, nor sulk, nor scold, nor overeat, nor overdrink, nor swear. God's thumbs! I'm going out to the barn to jump, fart, and pick my teeth. <laughs> Very sad things dropped into here. Oh, but some very happy things too. I'm done. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end of this book because I don't want to spoil it. It's not what I predicted. I do think this book is really clever. The message that the book is getting across is what I was getting from those themes of the various different wise people who gave her advice and Catherine eventually has her own realisation. I am who I am wherever I am. And I loved that. I think that's really moving and powerful that there are going to be certain things about her life that she can't always choose. There are going to be situations that she might have to be put in. But the one thing that can't ever, ever be taken away from her is herself, is that she is who she is and she knows who she is. And I loved that. But I won't tell you what actually happens at the end. I'm going to read the author's note now. The author's note gives a little bit of extra context to the time period and how different it was, not just in all the superficial ways that we can kind of learn about in, in history books, but in the very ways that they will have seen the world, the ways they will have thought, the things that they will have believed. It's just so, so different from our world. And, and the author actually says, like, can we even ever really know what it was like enough to write books about it? Maybe not, but we can kind of imagine what it must feel like to be someone so different from ourselves. I really liked this. I think it's a very sweet book and I can really see why this is a perfect time to have this kind of story turned into a movie. So I'm very excited to watch that, see what Lena Dunham has done with it. I can say with absolute certainty that this is not like any other book, at least that I have read. <laughs> it just doesn't fall into any of the cliches of what this kind of heroine would be like, of what a happy ending for this kind of girl might look like, for how this story might go. It just was so surprising. So that was the story of Catherine called Birdie and a really lovely way to spend an afternoon reading that. If you want to see more reading vlogs like this one, I will link here to a playlist of all the other times I have read a whole book in one video. Never quite as quickly as I read that one though. And do leave a comment below if you would like to see me doing more reading vlogs like this and I'll see you next time.